welcome to Becoming a Psychic Medium Masterclass. I am your host, Victoria Bond, and I am delighted to bring you the things that other people are not. <laughs> I'm a psychic medium, a spiritual empowerment coach, and the reason why this video is going to be so beneficial for those who are interested in mediumship is because I'm going to take all of those years of investigating out of your hands and give to you a nice, simple masterclass so you can start your mediumship. Yes, this is a collapsing of timelines and a quantum leap if you choose it to be. So before we go any further, make sure that you follow this account for more juicy videos to come. And I invite you to head over to Facebook to my Awaken with Victoria Bond community. So let's begin. Okay. So where to start a mediumship, the tools of mediumship, the do's and the don'ts, what is a psychic medium, the int uh, intuition as well with the mediumship and the different ways that spirit communicate. Okay, there's so much we need to go through today. So I'm going to try to get as much to you as I possibly can. All righty. So what is a psychic medium? We have had these, these points of view, these judgments and these considerations that to be a psychic medium, you've got to look into the future, right? We've had these interesting points of views that to be a psychic medium, you've got to see a spirit and actually communicate and hear them and all the things. We've been so conditioned about what a psychic medium is that the truth is we've all got these big question marks. Like what the heck is a psychic medium? And we've put psychic medium like abilities in the minority. The truth is we are all psychic mediums. Yes, I have said it. Now, some people are not going to like that I have said that, but as a teacher of mediumship, I can tell you Hundreds of people have gone through my program and every single one of them has had psychic mediumship gifts. One of the questions that we get quite often is, are you born with this? Well, 100% you're born with it. Every single person is born with it and every single baby that is born can see spirits. They can communicate with the dead. They are intuitive. They know what is good for them or not because they are really speaking with energy. Okay, so go, going back to the basics, what is a psychic medium? A psychic medium is a person who can communicate with spirit. And now, here's the thing I want you to listen to when I say, you are spirit in a human form. Without your body, you are spirit. Okay, so to communicate with spirit, we must understand that we are spirit. We must take spirit down from that pedestal or where we've been afraid of them and realize that when we're communicating with spirit, especially when we're doing readings, we are simply talking to another soul just like us. So psychic mediumship is about talking to spirit, but there's also different layers and there's also different ways that we can use our mediumship psychic abilities. Okay, so we can use cards and we can read those cards by using our intuition. We're also using a whole entire team of spirit guides that work with us. We are a tribe. Wherever we go, there's at least another 20 people for every human body we see, right? So it's never just one singular person. We are human. We have spirits with us. And they help us read, whether it's through cards, whether it's through seeing, or whether it's through channeling, or whether it's through knowing or hearing. We all have different ways that we can connect into spirit. But the problem is most people don't understand this because they blocked it off at a very, very young age. And most of us don't remember before four years old. And that is generally where we were our most conscious because of course we didn't have the mistaken beliefs and the limitations that we have been conditioned with as we've grown up with our tribes, with society, with the system that we are currently in. So a psychic medium in my opinion, is not just somebody that can just dive into the future and read the future. And to be honest with you, right, 
there is so many more potentials. It's not just one way, one destiny. There is many, 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 many different paths. And a good psychic medium is going to highlight the most prominent paths, but also leave you to make your own decisions. And knowing that you have a free will in how you go about in your day-to-day -day life as your life unfolds, okay? So a good psychic medium is not going to define your future. They're going to show you the possibilities. Now, this is what clairvoyance, right? Clairvoyance can see future events. They can also see spirit, whether it's in their third eye or within their eyes, okay? So that's another thing as well. But like, Everyone is psychic. Everyone has the ability. And I can't wait to share more with you because I'm going to tell you some of the things that you can do. Okay. So I'm going to tell you very, very soon some of the things that you can do to tap into your psychic mediumship abilities. So for me, when I was pregnant with my son, I literally had, this is some of the symptoms I want to share with you, right? And this is why tapping into your intuition is super uber uber. One of the most important things you can do when it comes to being a psychic medium, especially when you're beginning. So I'm pregnant with my son, right? And all I kept getting was in my ear. I kept feeling like there was water in my ear. So I'd be always jumping up, trying to get the water out of my ear. I couldn't sleep right? So these are some of the symptoms. If you have a very sharp, a very, very sharp psychic mediumship ability. So I was literally, I couldn't sleep. I felt like there was always like someone around me. There was a buzzing. I had mind chatter, right? I'd wake up at three o'clock in the morning, like three, three, three or three fifteen, And I just was wired. I thought I was going crazy. The signs and synchronicities around me were blowing my mind. There was feathers everywhere. And the next, and I'd see them physically with my eyes as I was walking down the street, or they would float down from the sky. And then it got to the point that I was walking into a room and I'd be like, did I just, I felt like the whole room was full of feathers, right? I was seeing it in my eyes. Songs about angels would come on or a song would come on and I would get like the earworm and I'd just hear the same song going over and over and over and over for days on end until something would stop it. Like my friend would tell me about her brother that had passed away and it was his birthday or something like that, right? Or somebody's name would be popped in my head and I couldn't stop thinking about them. What were some of the other things that would happen? Colors would pop at me. Books would pop at me. I felt like I was so highly, highly sensitive. And I thought maybe it was a pregnancy. I thought maybe I had depression or anxiety. Maybe I was like a little bit manic. But it kept happening and happening and happening. And I started noticing I could smell smoke. I could taste something funny. I would have these dreams that were just out the gate. They were like, it was random faces before I was going to sleep. And I just felt like I was in a room screaming, what the hell is going on, right? So to be a psychic medium, if you've experienced any of the things that I've just said, they are signs that spirit is trying to get your attention to wake you up out of a matrix state, out of a 3D state where you have gone, survival is this way and I don't want to look this way or this way or up or down. The truth is we are all psychic mediums. And one of the things that I did was I started saying, what are the lyrics of that song that's going around and around and around? And I would listen to the lyrics. I'd write them down. When I couldn't sleep at three in the morning, I'd say, is there something here keeping me awake? And what the heck is it? Show yourself to me. When I started seeing feathers around, I'd say, why are you showing me feathers? Okay, so this is another hot tip. Questions. Why am I seeing these questions, these feathers, right? Why am I getting the song? Why am I waking up all the time? How and why did I just see a shadow? What am I smelling? And who does that belong to? So that is what I did, right? I asked questions. And rather, 
rather than actually trying to hear the answer or see the answer or demand the answer, I let the answer land. I let the answer land in the timing it was meant to. And this is what happened next. The signs and the synchronicities, words, even pictures would pop out at me. And all of a sudden, I was able to translate what the words meant when it came to the question I asked. Maybe it was a name that popped out when I asked, who was that shadow or that smell that I had? And maybe the name popped out. And maybe I knew that that person, when I said, who was that person connected to a client's partner who had passed away or a friend's brother that passed away? The most bizarre pieces of the puzzle started coming together when I started to stop and recognize the strange things happening, the symptoms, right, of mediumship. This is when I was becoming a medium, or should I say, remembering I was a medium. And I would ask a question, I would let it land, something would pop out, which would connect to another thing, which would connect to another thing, which would connect to another thing. They were like smacking me in the face. Here's the thing. I can hear you now. Well, how's that going to happen for me? That doesn't happen for me. It happens differently for me. Like nothing happens for me. I'm blocked. I'm not a psychic medium, but I feel like there's this little niggle in me that just wants to keep listening. But I'm triggered because well, this, I don't know if this applies to me, right? Here's the thing. Every single person has got all of these senses, clairvoyant, clairaudient, so you can hear and you can see and you can taste and you can sense and you can feel, and you're an empath. We all have them. Some have like more clears that are stronger than others, right? And others are more in the dream state. But we have the ability to connect to every single one of them. And if we, if we have the patience to ask the questions and the allowance to drop our barriers. This is another golden nugget. I hope you've got a pen and paper here and I hope you've saved this video. If we can drop those barriers and if we can expand our energy when it comes to psychic mediumship and tapping into spirits and reading the future for people, if we, whatever the goal is, we can drop our barriers and expand our energy rather than shrinking and hiding and being in fear of what's going to come through, you become the most incredible medium. You really, really do. And for me, it was a matter of ripping off that band-aid and going, I'm going to play. And I'm going to share with you some, some of the tools that I use very, very soon and the story that actually exploded me into mediumship and my business. And I've now been in my business, I think, for about four years, full, full time, teaching psychic mediumship, teaching a program. My first book has just gone to the editor for the first draft. Oh my goodness, it is all happening. And this only began when I was 33 years old. Now I'm 39, right? I'm nearly 40. So at 33 years old, I was awakening and remembering my gifts. I knew nowhere and no one. I had no idea how to start. I went into crystal shops and I was going, I think I'm awakening. Can you help me? And they'd go, here you go. Here's a channeling book. And I was like, thank you. But I didn't know how to ask, you know, like I need help. But what do I do? I was brought up religious. So I wasn't allowed to go into crystal shops or play with uh, these cards or play with wands or pendulums or, or crystals. I wasn't allowed to because it was, it was just bad. We weren't allowed to. So I had no one to ask any questions to. Okay, so if you're at the beginning of your journey, and also if you are religious, I need to speak to this real briefly as well. If you've been religious, or if you are religious, if you are, if you call yourself a Christian, if you call yourself an atheist, whatever the labels are, could we just drop them for a minute and ask, 
and I'm going to tell you another hot tip right now, like in a second, ask ourselves to drop our barriers, expand and say, what would love do? What would love do? And if I can trust my heart and if I can trust myself and I've got these God given gifts, right? Why would I have them if I'm not meant to use them? As you drop your barriers, you expand, you then open your heart. And when you do a reading, you always lead with love. Always lead with love. Is there bad stuff when it comes to psychic mediumship? Yes, if you are choosing to play with darkness. Now, there's no difference between if you are playing with people that have got darkness and they've got bodies, right? Who do you hang out with in your everyday life? You are who you hang out with, right? So I choose to hang out with high vibe, high frequency, beautiful, light humans, as well as spirits. So you don't need to worry about being possessed or dabbling because when you're leading from your heart, when you're dropping your barriers and expanding, when you are feeling grounded, then only good can come from that, okay? And your mediumship gets super, super sharp. So yeah, everyone can absolutely do this. Your intuition is so, so important. And you have got different energy centers and chakras. You've got the main like seven meridians, also known as energy centers and chakras. If you don't know about that yet, go Google that because if you're like me, you have no idea. <laughs> I had no idea what they were seven years ago. And if you are spiritual at all, you will know what the chakra system is. But what we need to know about the energy meridians within us is not just seven main ones. I mean, the seven main ones, but there's lots of little ones as well. But we actually read through our energy centers. We are energetic beings and our first language was energy. So intuition is a very, very, very strong part of mediumship. Mediumship is not external from you. Your spirit guides are not external from you. God is not external from you. Source energy is not external from you. Even your client, your reading is not external from you. You are a mirror of everything in your reality. Okay, this is like kind of quantum. This is quantum quantum. But this is another hot tip. If you see the world around you as a mirror for all of the high vibe and even the low vibe you will find that you see yourself in every situation in every trigger in every celebration and then you realize if everything is internal then you can go within and really heal any wounds that you have or turn up any of those superpowers Rather than bypassing or blaming or shaming or guilting the external, you can actually own your own power. Okay, we're getting a little bit more advanced here. So I'm going to like take it back a little bit. And there's many more videos on how to tap in to the quantum. Okay, some of the other things I wanted to talk to you about. So different ways spirit communicate. Like I mentioned before with the symptoms, right? So you can get the popping in your ear. That's how they talk to you, right? You're, you're shifting frequency, just like a radio station changing. And you are like a tuning in to them talking. It was just today I was doing a, a, a very long, like an hour and three quarter call with one of my clients. And when I was listening to her, I went, ow. <laughs> and I got this in my ears. I was like, oh my gosh, spirit's trying to talk to me. It was about my client. It's always about your client. If you're reading for your client, it's never about you, but you are a mirror. Okay. And I was like, whoa, okay. She's clear audience because of the ears, right? And spirit is trying to talk to her. Is she listening? Interesting. So I had to ask a question. Is she listening? What am I hearing? Is this for her? Is this saying she's a clear audience or is this saying she needs to listen? 
because there's always double meanings, right? And you get the gist of this when you know how to listen to your intuition, which is a completely different video, but super, super important. With your eyes, right, they, they communicate with you a lot through your visions. So visions and kind of thought processes, your thoughts are mediumship, your thoughts. When I'm reading, and I'm going to tell you a story in a moment about how I came to really like figure that one out, right? I figured this all out myself. <laughs> so you might be thinking about something to do with somebody. So you're talking to somebody and you're having these flashbacks and these like these visions it feels and all these things are happening, right? That is because they belong to that person. You're in their head, right? You're in your, their head. You are picking things out of their head and your or, or your imagination is legit telling you the stuff. It's like a movie playing in your head. So there's a couple of different things there. You can take things from their, their head and see it, right? Or you literally are playing out like a movie in your head. And that's usually spirit giving you so much information. So the head and the mind and the imagination is very, very important when it comes to mediumship. That's how I do a lot of my readings. I just trust everything that's coming in and I say it. And then I either get a yes or a no. And if I get a no, then it usually means the other option, right? So it's like, okay, well, what else can that mean? And we always start putting those pieces of the puzzle together. Yay! Most mediums are afraid to ask questions and to put those pieces of the puzzle together. So getting a no is actually great in mediumship because then you can say, well, let's find the other piece, right? So how are other ways? You can feel touch. So quite often you might feel a spirit touching you or in your body, you might get an ow, an ache, or you might get a, a sharp pain in your heart or your head. Often that is how the spirit has passed away. Or if you're reading for the person, maybe they have had heart problems themselves and it's spirit giving you evidence to say, hey, this person is, knows what they do. Keep going. Trust this person, right? It's confirmation and evidence. Other ways spirit can communicate to you is through like tingling in your fingers as well. Tingling in a heat of your, especially if you're a healer, right? A natural healer, you might have healing codes that come through your hands and heal while you're reading, you can get tingles and tingles and tingles. Sometimes I literally just sense a female. It's the sense of tree. Like I could sense a female being around. So they they will they will stand next to you and you will kind of see in your head a little old lady standing there and you'll be like, oh, I can feel it. There's a lady here. It's all in your head, right? But okay, I feel, how tall do I feel she is? Um how old do I feel she is? Does she know that she's even passed away? Like, what is her connection? If it's on the left side, for me, it's usually the mother. It's on the mother's side of the person I'm reading for. If it's on the right side, it's usually the father. Um, that is the way it works for me. And it can work differently for everybody, but that's the rules I made up. <laughs> so that's what happened because I create my own reality. So I can actually connect to spirits in a way that I choose to. Something I didn't know eight years ago. I had no freaking clue. I was looking externally through all these people trying to figure out how to put all these symptoms and make them into something that I could understand, okay? And then I started realizing that I am spirit too, okay? So they can communicate with you through all your different senses. Um, also, it's really amazing if you're meant to meet somebody, you will all of a sudden start bumping into them at the supermarket. So also they will, so they will put people and situations and songs and feathers. Um, they will put money. They will put all sorts of stuff within your reach. But quite often, it's so subtle and we haven't actually realized that spirit is working through us and to communicate with spirit, the subtleties, they're not so subtle when you start seeing them, right? You're like, whoa, that was amazing. But the subtleties 
they are always happening. Spirit is always working for you. The universe is always working for you. And when you get these buzzings or the pops in your ears or you see a shadow or you see a neon sign, when you ask a question, you see mother, you know, <laughs> like when your head is telling you stories, stop and just tune in. Why do I say this? Because it's taken so much effort for spirit to come and give you this message. And when we bypass it, we are literally disrespecting spirit. And they have may have tried for years to connect to you. Okay. So, okay. The story was, I'm hairdressing, right? So I was a hairdresser for 20 years. And this is the pivotal point in my entire life. I'm hairdressing and I knew that the lady in the chair was spiritual. I knew she went to a spiritual church. I knew that she was really super gifted. And I had told her how I had been getting signs and synchronicities. And I thought I was a medium and I was like pregnant as. <laughs> and I said to her, could I please read for you? I am absolutely petrified. And I think I may be full of shit. I think that I, this isn't real, but I've got to try because if I don't try, then I am literally always going to wonder why, right? I'm always going to wonder why. And I had a little bit of guilt because of being brought up Catholic. It was like, mum was always like, don't do that stuff. Yes, we've got it in the family, but don't do it, you know, give it up to God. But I was like, I want to reach as many people as I possibly can if I have this gift. If I could tap into spirit, if I could help people that have lost their loved ones due to suicide or lost their children or lost their parents or anyone that's grieving, then I've got to do this, right? I've always wanted to help people. So what I did is I got a deck of cards. I shuffled them, right? We'd gone upstairs after I'd done her hair and I was shaking like a leaf. I was like, I've got to try. Half the problem is, guys, sometimes... People just don't try. They say, I can't do it, but they didn't try. Okay, another golden tip. You've got to do the thing. You've got to practice. You've got to put yourself out there to actually be able to read, right? Would have we been able to walk if we hadn't of practiced? We learned, right? So this is amazing because you're just remembering your birthright of being a medium but you still have to practice because it's just like hopping on a bike and riding you eventually actually remember that it's kind of easy it just seems so foreign so I got my cards and I started shuffling them I'm shaking like a leaf and I'm just like oh my gosh this is this is D-Day. This is do or quit, you know. So I'm shuffling them along, feeling like a fraud, going, who do I think I am? My ego is yelling at me. How do you turn 33 and think you're a psychic medium when you've never done a reading, right? So the fraud button, you may feel that. Let me know if you feel that, right? The fraud thing comes in. Who do I think I am? And I hear this little voice and it says, don't use cards. I couldn't even read them. I'm looking at them and I'm like, nah, I'm no connection there. So I put down my cards. I drop my barriers. I expand my energy. I open my heart and I say, I lead with love. Show me what I need to tap into for this lady. And all of a sudden, it's like a movie turned on. I close my eyes and it goes so, so, so fast. So spirit is very, very fast, right? So sometimes we've got to ask spirit, please slow down. And then we have to speed up. And I saw this man who looked like Clark Gable from Gone with the Wind, which is a very, very, very old film. And I saw this man, he's got this look and he's got this mustache and he's gorgeous and he's tall and he's slim, very, very slim. And I go, okay. I'm just seeing a man that looks like from Gone with the Wind. Couldn't even remember his name. And then all of a sudden, I was like, what else do I see? And I'm shutting my eyes and I'm nervous and I'm shaking. And I'm like, no, but I've got to do this. It means so much to me. And then I see two children, a boy and a girl, one slightly older than the other, both blonde with blue eyes. And I'm like, 
but he's dark. Oh, well, this is what I'm seeing. And I'm telling her, I see a man, I see a boy, I see a girl, close in age, blonde hair, blue eyes. And I'm, and my other part of my head is going, oh my God, you're so full of shit. You're so full of shit. And then I, I tell her what he's feeling. And he was feeling, he wanted to say thank you, but he was feeling sad. And I, I can't remember exactly all the things now. I've done thousands of readings since. But when I told her all these things, I opened my eyes because I was too nervous to even look at her. And I said to her, that's what I got. She said to me, Victoria, that is the best reading I've ever had. My uncle, he died three years ago. I've been to many, many readers and very good ones as well. And none of them were able to connect to him, especially like you did today. And I went, what? And I literally said to her, are you lying to me? Are you lying? Like, are you are you joking? Because that's not very nice. She said, no, hands down. And then she went on and she told me that that man had these two beautiful children. He was a stay-at-home dad. And one day in the middle of the night, his wife took the children and fled overseas. And he didn't see his children. His heart was broken. He didn't see them again for many, many years until my client, the person I was reading for, got them together in a pub randomly overseas where she was doing her OB, she reconnected them. So she was, she got to reconnect her uncle and her cousins. They were then adults. I've got goosebumps even talking about it. And they reunited. He wanted to come and say thank you. And I could feel his emotions because the sadness I felt was the fact that his children had been taken away from him. Now, I don't know all of the circumstances or anything like this. This was me tapping in to the family, right, and to what was going on. And he could never, ever express how grateful he was to be reconnected with his children. He had died, like I said, three years um, at that time that I had done that reading. And she was so grateful to be able to connect in with him. And then I said, okay, well, that's great. And I said, what else can I see? And the next minute, another girl comes in and she's like, hi, here I am. And, you know, please don't feel bad for us not being friends, um, et cetera, et cetera, when we grew up. And one of her friends that she was childhood friends with had just recently passed of cancer. And my client had been feeling super guilty about it. So she came in to say, hey, just your friendship from when we were children was enough to fill my heart. So I just kind of remembered that. <laughs> so more, more spirits had come through. And I kind of visualize them being at a door, stepping in, me having a conversation, them stepping out and the next person coming in. This all happened without, I'm going to share with you in a moment, the tools that you can use to actually turn up your psychic mediumship gifts super, super quickly. Okay. So I only had the deck of cards and I was told not to use them. And I believe that spirit invited me to do that. So I didn't hide behind the cards. A lot of mediums, and I work with advanced mediums that come to me and go through my signature program, Magnificent Mediumship Certification. And a lot of them hide behind their cards. A lot of them are too afraid to pay, I mean, to charge money, right? A lot of them are too afraid to say what they're truly seeing because of this fraudulism and the pressure from the person that they're reading for. They, they feel like there's this pressure to prove, to give, um, to give value for money type of thing. But the truth is to be with a medium and to be a medium is an absolute privilege because whatever comes through if a spirit does come through that is magic but even to get some some beautiful intuitive guidance for your future and your future possibilities is magic as well so being a psychic medium is not about being a party trick okay I'm sure there's some mediums out there that love to be the party trick but it goes so much deeper to become a psychic medium means that you are holding somebody right you're this mother archetype you are a coach archetype you are literally 
holding the space for somebody to be vulnerable, to drop their barriers, to expand their energy and for them to connect in with you. This is not a one-way street. There's all your spirit guides, all of their spirit guides, you as spirit, them as spirit, and this deep, deep connection. So I want to tell you a little bit now about the tools of mediumship. I personally love these, or these, they are what they call tarot cards. I don't use them as tarot cards. I use them as oracle cards. There is a difference. So tarot cards are like, they're, they're full of different like cups and miners, arcades and all, all these different things, right? I'm not going to go into, <laughs> I've done tarot training. Um, it doesn't interest me because I, I'm more of an intuitive psychic medium, right? So tarot is great. But I don't use them as tarot. I use them as intuitive guidance, as I use them as visuals. So using visuals is so amazing because you can literally showcase, that is like the wrong card, but you can actually showcase people and tell them, you know, what you're seeing within the card, okay? Or the words or the colors, what is popping for you? Cards are amazing. They are not to be completely relied on. Um, your intuition comes first before that, but they are great because human beings like to see things. So I'm going to show you a couple of more things. So the cards are great. I teach people not to rely on the cards um, and definitely not to rely on the book because I'm telling you now, right? A psychic medium who pulls a card and reads from the book is a lazy psychic medium and it's not psychic, that's not psychic mediumship, right? It's reading from a card that my 10-year-old can do. So you have to use your own gut and intuition unless your intuition says read from the book, right? Sometimes that happens, you're like, I've just got to read this because my intuition or my knowing tells me so, okay? To talk to spirit is your knowing, is your intuition, is the voices in your head, is the stories, right? You, If you're lucky enough to be able to hear with your ears and see with your eyes, that is amazing. But 90% of people, it is the subtleties that we feel within our body that is actually connecting in with our mediumship skills. I hope you guys are getting a lot from this video, by the way. This is a wand. What is the significance of using a wand? Well, crystals are extremely high vibrational. Do we need crystals? No. Do I choose to use them? Yes, because I will use anything that's going to enhance my readings or my healings or my Reiki or my light language, whatever it is I'm doing. By the way, make sure that you follow this account because we've got more videos coming on light language, on intuition, so many things, so many things to share with you. So this is my wand that my best friend made me. Um, it is phenomenal. And it's really important that if you have a wand that you connect in with it, it's like purchasing an animal. Like you need to feel like it's the right purchase, the right animal, the right thing for you so I was very very lucky that my friend she made this she it just fits into my hand perfectly she literally hunted beaches to get the perfect one the perfect wood and all the crystals are significant to my purpose which is amazing all crystals mean different things um crystals come from the earth okay so if you've been like oh but crystals are bad no that they're, they're not they can't be they come from our earth they are as pure and they're not man-made they are from earth so it's like phenomenal so what um, wands are really good for is for clearing space before a reading, you know, like we want to be able to clear our space. We want to be able to light everything up. We want to have our heart open with love and do a little bit of a light blast. So much more I could share with you about that. So I love wands because you can literally work through the computer or if you're with somebody face to face and you can literally pull stuff out of people. You can clear, you can cleanse, you can help to balance those meridian systems that we spoke about. Wands are amazing. I use them all the time. Now, speaking of crystals, like this is just a stunning bowl of crystals. My friend made me this bowl from hand. We've got like the rose quartz, which is for the heart. 
We've got the sh um, Shang Night, which, uh, which is what I'm wearing, which is deeply, deeply grounding because I do a lot of work in the galactic. I need to still be able to be here in my human. We have got clear quartz, which is a connector straight up. So you can straight, you can connect straight into source energy, straight into spirit. It kind of clears those portals, if you will. Um, basically the darker crystals are more grounding and they can, they're really good at clearing entities and keeping your aura clean. And the lighter ones are great for travel and connecting in and especially astral traveling and stuff as well. Um, amethyst is fantastic for when, especially when you're having a spiritual awakening, um, uh, great for children. Okay. So honestly, rose quartz and amethyst, um, uh, one of the most cheapest crystals, but the most, oh, I think the most powerful for children. Absolutely amazing crystals. So they're amazing, amazing, amazing. We have also got this here is white sage, which I love, love, love. White sage. There's also Paleo Santo. Now, these none of these tools clear entities, really. Okay. So, yes, like I said, the dark crystal will help. Um, it will kind of help keep things away a little bit, but nothing clears entities. So people are going, oh, I'm smudging my house to get the spirit or the spook out, like, which is a whole nother video on clearing entities. Um, so please make sure you go over to Awaken Community with Victoria Bond on Facebook. But like well, smudging your house is not going to close a portal or get rid of a spirit that's not even realized it's passed away. It's just kind of like hanging out in your house. That is not going to work. This is only to raise the vibration as is crystals. I do like selenite because selenite is so reasonable. This was like $30. You can put a beautiful light underneath and it kind of glows different colors. Um, but it actually clears all the other crystals, right? So you can actually have selenite. I have mine sometimes on top here and it will clear the crystals. Full moon also clears those crystals and charges them. Another tool that I really love, and this is vibrational as well, I don't know if you guys can hear this. It's literally vibrating. Okay. Sound, um, singing, even like singing and like mantra, like if you put like cacao ceremony or mantras into Spotify all of that music is so high vibe and vibrational and it's like a moving prayer. It really helps you with your psychic mediumship. So also just literally banging on it, right? Just love that so much. Crystal bowls are very similar to that as well. So we also have these beautiful... You can go around the house and do entity clearings with them. They really, really help to clear entities. There is intention and there's also entity clearings. This is something I teach. Um, I'm a master at entity clearing. Entity clearing, another hot tip, write this down. Entity clearing is a huge part of mediumship. Now, this is one of the not to do's, okay? Don't do mediumship and not know how to clear entities because... The problem is if you don't understand how to cut cords to clear yourself, to open your heart, to connect in, um, to ground, if you don't understand those concepts, I really encourage you to go learn them first. This is something that I talk about all the time on my Facebook page, um, Awaken Community with Victoria Bond on Facebook, because you don't want hitchhikers, right? This is what they call it, spirits that are dragging along hitchhikers. Why don't you want spirit hanging around? Because they are not dense in a body. And once they attach onto your aura, right? And they, they say if they need to be cleared and they've attached onto your aura and maybe they don't even know that they've passed. So they, they're just hanging out here, right? In a certain level of consciousness. The thing that happens is they drain your energy. This is what happened to me when I was suffering exhaustion, when I was becoming more psychic. As I was turning on my psychic mediumship gifts, I was suffering 
deep, deep exhaustion because I didn't realize that I had all these entities, all these spirits that were hanging out. So I was like in a party all the time and they were using my aura, using my energy, using my density to hold themselves down here, not because they are bad spirits, but because they didn't know. They didn't know that they were hurting me, right? Not, write this one down as well. Not all spirits are conscious. Somewhere we believed that or we were taught that once you die, you go straight to heaven, you go straight to the light and you're out of here. Not what I've seen. So many spirits, even yesterday, there was an old lady standing next to me while I was doing, my ears ringing again, um, standing next to me while I was doing a reading online in my awakening community with Victoria Bond and she hadn't cleared, she hadn't passed over. So I had to help my client help her pass over because she was standing there and I could pretty much see her with my eyes. She was so clear. And I was like, this lady doesn't even know that she's died on some level. So we had to help her pass over because wherever she's anchoring herself, she's also draining that as well. So it's not healthy to keep spirits around. If we allow them to, if we give them the information that they have passed over. Again, a completely different video. This is something I teach in my Magnificent Mediumship Certification. If we can help them pass over, they can fly back whenever they want. <laughs> but being stuck here and looping in a time frame because of whatever reason, maybe they passed because they were on drugs or alcohol, or maybe it was so sudden they don't even know that they died, right? We can help them find out that they have passed over, they can pass with absolute ease and they can become conscious. So that is what I want to share with you today. Um, meditation is super important when it comes to becoming a psychic medium. Playing with all the toys is literally just a bonus. It's just fun. We all need toys. But the truth is if you drop your barriers, you expand and you lead with love, your psychic mediumship will come to you super, super fast, very, very quickly. Remember, asking the questions, getting no is good because you're piecing the puzzles together. Don't make anything too definite because everyone has got more than one timeline. Psychic mediumship is not just about talking to dead people. It is really about being an intuitive coach, being a person who can hold space, that can hear the other and remember, it's not just you doing the reading. You've got the team of spirit around you. So to honor those spirit is to see the signs and the synchronicities. It's to understand that we've got all of these abilities and ways and symptoms that spirit are trying to talk to us. And if we give all of those things the time that they deserve, ask the question, let it land, even start writing things down, magic and miracles will happen. This is what happened in my life. And now, yes, I am a platform medium. Yes, I do readings daily for my clients. Yes, I teach mediumship. And I'm here to show the world and tell the world that you can be a psychic medium too. I really hope and I trust that what I've shared with you today is beneficial. I would love to connect with you and I just want to share from my heart to your heart what I wish I knew when I was going through those little intuitive hits of you are a psychic, you know, what are these symptoms? Am I going crazy? Usually they pair up hand in hand. So sending you so much love. I can't wait to see you in the next video. Namaste.